Welcome back to The Law Show. I'm Mike McLeod. I'll be with you for this segment of The Law Show. Uh, I'm one of the partners with Kerrigan Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson. Our law firm has been around for a long time. We have offices in Pensacola, Crestview, and Panama City, and we have represented people who've been injured because of accidents caused by others for 40 years. And we're proud to have hosted the law show for most of those 40 years for a long time. And we hope the show provides helpful information to uh, people across Northwest Florida. My email address, if you have a question or comment about the show, is mike.mcleod at kerrigan.com. It's on the screen now. Or, as we mentioned throughout uh, all of the show, uh, our Main phone number, 850-444-4444, is also a number where you can text us your questions or comments. We read them every time you text them. We try to reply as best we can. And this morning, I'm going to try to address some of the questions that have been sent in by viewers uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, primarily about automobile accident cases. So we're going to go to the mailbag and I'll abbreviate some of these questions and try and make them a little more concise and see how many we can get into uh, and answered during the next seg segment of the law show. First, uh, I won't mention any names, but a viewer writes, how much will it cost to hire a lawyer in Florida? Well, I assume that refers to uh, a personal injury case and the fees in personal injury cases, the fees that lawyers charge in these cases is different from cases where, for example, if you were to hire a criminal defense attorney, uh, a, an attorney in a divorce or family matter, uh, a state planning case, those lawyers charge fees that are typically paid prior to or during the representation of a client for those cases. But in personal injury cases, lawyers charge what is called a contingency fee. And, and that is the fee is contingent upon the result in the case. So for example, our clients in personal injury cases do not pay any fee at all, and they don't pay any of the cost associated with the case. And cost can be things like um, paying for copies of, of medical bills or paying for copies of medical records. Sometimes we hire uh, expert uh, engineers to look at how accident happens or specialists in some areas. Sometimes we, in fact, very often we meet with uh, physicians who are treating our clients to get the physicians to help us project well, how is this injury going to affect our client going forward? And those doctors, of course, charge for their time like other professionals. So we pay those costs in advance. So the fees that are paid by our clients and, and people who hire personal injury lawyers are contingent on the outcome. There's no fee paid in advance. There are no costs paid along the way. Only at the end of the case, if there is a recovery, does the client pay a percentage of that recovery? So it allows people to hire lawyers and it suggests the lawyer thinks, well, I'm, I think I can be successful in your case because I'm willing not to get paid until you receive your compensation also. And what a lawyers like about that, what do we as lawyers like about that who represent people who are injured, the better we do for our clients um, the, the better our compensation as well. Um, we, we've done this for a long time, and, and that's not really uh, always our primary goal. We've helped a lot of people over many years. And what clients like about it is I can, hoard the, I can hire the best lawyers we can find, and I don't have to pay them unless they're successful in our case or my case. And the lawyer, by the way, it's not the lawyer's case, it's your case. And so who ultimately decides whether or not this is sufficient compensation, do I want to settle my case, that belongs to the client. 
um, we, we hope that clients listen to lawyers' advice and follow and trust in their lawyer as far as what's the right thing to do about settlement. But it's your case. So uh, how much does hiring a lawyer cost in Florida? It depends on the case. But in our cases, we charge a contingency fee, which allows the client not to pay in advance, but only to pay if there's a successful result in the case. All right, let's see. Two, how quickly should I contact a lawyer after being injured in an accident? Um, so uh, I think it sort of depends on the facts uh, of the case and the facts of the accident. So we, our firm has never believed that after an accident, your first call should be to a lawyer. The accident wasn't your fault. You're minding your own business. It's the last thing you think about. And then all of a sudden, you're in the emergency room. You're in the hospital. Uh, you, you can't work. So, so there's plenty of time to hire a lawyer. There's plenty of time to consider hiring a lawyer. And I think this is almost obvious, but the first thing you should do is take care of your health, take care of your family, get get back to a position where you can manage, um, get your medical care first. Um, and then um, cases where you were not at fault and that are cases where you're not able to work, you have fractures or are you going to have surgery? Those are cases that lawyers can really help, uh, even the odds when you're dealing with an insurance company who rep who insures the at-fault driver. So um, I do think that cases that are not clear-cut, cases where there's some uh, dispute about who caused the accident, I think particularly in those cases, it can be more important to hire uh, lawyers earlier because good lawyers will want to talk to witnesses that support your side of the case. Good lawyers will want to preserve the evidence at the scene of accidents, whether there are automobile accidents or accidents involved in premises around uh, the community or other accidents. So gathering evidence, whether it's from talking to witnesses or gathering physical evidence, uh, sometimes will you know, in a case, I'm trying to think of an example, but in a case where there's a dispute about whether a car had its headlights on, we can take those headlights, we can find the car, take those headlights out of a car. In many cases, we can tell after the fact whether or not a headlight was on at the time of the accident. And then many times we can retrieve information from the event data recorder of the automobile if the car doesn't get away. So how soon should I contact a lawyer after an accident? It sort of depends, I think, but primarily you should address your medical issues first. You don't need to rush to hire a lawyer right away. I think that I would push that up a little bit if there's some dispute about how the accident happened. And then finally, kind of on the back end of that, um, Cases like this have certain limitations, period. So in Florida, for example, the statute of limitations on making a claim against another driver in an automobile accident uh, is four years from the date of the accident. There are some uh, specifics to that, but generally after a car wreck, your claim against the other driver and the other driver's insurance company will expire after a four-year period. Um, uh, with medical malpractice cases, for example, the statute of limitations period is two years from the date you knew or should have known of the malpractice. So there are different limitations periods in Florida, and if you wait beyond that period of time, your case will expire unless you settle it or a complaint is filed in the case. Um, but those are generous periods, so you just certainly don't have to rush into hiring a lawyer um, right after an accident. Uh, I've got a couple of more questions here I'm going to try and answer, but I want to remind viewers uh, of my email address. It's mike.mcleod at kerrigan.com. Uh, and again, our main number at the law firm where we can be reached throughout the week, actually 24-7, 
is 850-444-4444. And I can be text at that number this morning and we'll get your comments or questions. And we get a lot of them and we look at them all. And the ones that um, um, suggest the, uh, uh, wanting a reply, we really try to reply to uh, everyone who contacts us during the show. All right, so um, here's another question. Uh, I won't mention the name. Um, my doctor says that my injuries from my car accident are permanent. How can I protect my future? Um, so uh, in Florida, we are commonly called a no-fault automobile insurance state. And, and that is kind of means that um, uh, in a car accident in Florida, no matter who's at fault, you can you recover from your own insurance company for a percentage of your medical expenses and lost wages. And we recover that even if the other guy's at fault from your PIP coverage. And we're required to have that in Florida on our automobiles. And it's typically $10,000 of PIP, of PIP coverage. And you get those initial bills paid by your own company, even if, the, if it's the other guy's fault. So, but if you're injured in an accident and your injuries are permanent in some way, and, and that can be, uh, look, you can lose a finger in an accident. That's a permanent injury. You can have a fractured bone in your uh, forearm and have to have a plate put in there to put it back together. That's a permanent injury. You can have permanent symptoms of pain. You can have um, permanent headaches following an accident. You can have um, permanent neck or back pain. And typically we will get an evaluation from a treating physician to tell us whether or not that doctor thinks that, well, this is something the patient, the client's going to have to live with. So in Florida, if you have a permanent injury from an accident, that opens up your claim to additional types of damages for pain, intangible damages for pain and suffering, the loss of ability to enjoy the things in life that you used to enjoy. So in every accident, you're entitled to recover your PIP coverage from your own company, insurance company, and then you're entitled to recover your other medical, additional medical expenses from the other driver's insurance company, both the expenses that you've had in the past and the expenses that you may incur in the future, and, and then um, also your past lost wages and future lost wages. But if you have a permanent injury in the accident, you're entitled to also recover for intangible damages like your pain and suffering, your lack, uh, your loss of the ability to do the things you used to do. I used to like to fish. I used to like to ride a boat. It bothers me now because I'm bouncing the water. Only if you have um, a permanent injury in the accident. Um, so I've got a lot of other questions here. We're going to, we're going to also get to those, but I'm running out of time in this seg segment. So again, I'm Mike McLeod. Uh, my email address is Mike dot mcleod at kerrigan.com and our text number and our main number is 850-444-4444. We host the law show every Sunday morning. We're personal injury lawyers across Northwest Florida. We've been doing that for many, many years and we love hosting the law show every Sunday morning. So we'll be right back after this brief moment. 